Hey, Greta, great, great to see you. Great to hear from you. Nice to, nice to see you. All right, well, it's no secret that you, as a leader of the House, it's a very different role than just being a member of Congress. You've got to lead the whole place, Republicans and Democrats. You only have a two-person majority right now. It's going to go down to one next week. Tell me, if this bill having to do with foreign aid, would it be a different bill if you had a, let's say, a 10 or 15 uh, vote majority? Yeah, absolutely, um, Greta. It would, of course. We, remember, and I have to remind uh, people at home all the time, Republicans here only control, of course, one chamber of Congress. We only have the House, and to your point, we barely have that. Next week, we'll be down again to the smallest majority in U.S. history, a one-vote margin. And that means if, if I want to pass legislation that I love, I've got to get every single Republican on board. And then even if we do that, Greta, remember, everybody remembers from civics class, there's two chambers of Congress, right? We send it over, as we've done for many pieces of legislation, to the Senate. And Chuck Schumer and the Democrats control the Senate. Oh, and of course we have a Democrat in the White House. So it makes it very challenging for us to get 100% of what we want on anything. It's, it's actually impossible. And that's why all of our legislation is sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk collecting dust right now. So when it comes to a bill like this, we fight hard, we get as much as we can on the product, and we try to take care of these obligations. And, and you know, as Reagan reminded us, I'd rather get I'd rather get 80% of what I want than go over the cliff with a flag waving. And we gotta remind ourselves of that every day here. All right, I, I know that you're not uh, the Senate Majority Leader, but perhaps you can help me out on this one. The bill, which is about $61 billion to Ukraine, is that one of, in the Senate bill and the House bill have to be reconciled. You both have to agree on the same thing. The House wants to put a portion of that as a loan to Ukraine. The Senate bill does not have that. And can you explain that to me? Because, I mean, it might be more appealing to the House if it were a loan. And we know that even if we loan money to Ukraine, we can later forgive it. You know, we forgive loans often. So why, tell me about that loan provision and why it, uh, maybe have some idea why the Senate won't make that a loan to Ukraine rather than just to be giving them the money? Well, the Senate's going to have to now, and that's a really important question. What we did was we rejected the Senate supplemental bill because it was everything merged into one, and, and it didn't have some of these important features that we want in the bill. So we redrafted it, and we're going to send them a House supplemental bill that's, that's very different. For one thing, we broke it into four pieces. Uh, we have the Israel component, the, the Ukraine component, the Indo-Pacific component, and then we have a fourth uh, bill that is in this package that has a lot of our innovations included, like the Repo Act, where we use the uh, seized assets of corrupt Russian oligarchs to fund the opposition in Ukraine. Everybody thinks that makes sense. Uh, President Trump is credited with really advancing this idea of the loan concept, to your point. And so what we've done is we say any of the funding that goes to Ukraine for this governmental assistance is in the form of a loan. That's in our package that our, the House will be voting on uh, early Saturday. The rule is being finished up tonight to make that possible. We've also included a lot of other things, like uh, increasing sanctions against Iran and Russia. Uh, we, we're going to change the strategy and have a lot more oversight and accountability over the funds because that's what the American people deserve. But as I've said so many times in the last 24 hours, you know, I would rather send bullets to Ukraine than, than American boys. We, you know, we, we don't want to have boots on the ground. We can prevent that by allowing them to hold yeah. Putin at bay. And I think, Greta, very frankly, that Donald Trump, when he's elected, I think he can broker a peace over there. But we've got to at least allow the Ukrainians to defend themselves until we get to that point. You know, the criticism is, I've heard someone say, are we going to be uh, Winston Churchill or are we going to be Chamberlain? Are we going to appease or are we going to, you know, take charge? Um, you know, a lot of the criticism of this bill is our own southern border. And I know that you have that some conservatives in, in your house are, don't want to include the southern border in this bill. Um, how, how do you, what's your explanation to the American people uh, as to, you know, why this aid to Ukraine while we have, while we're, you know, while we have this border issue? So the border is the number one priority of the House Republicans. We fight for it here every single day. I've been doing it since I became speaker and way before. Since Joe Biden entered the Oval Office, he's created an absolute catastrophe at the border. And you and I don't need to recount all the statistics and the, the, hor the parade of horribles that has come out of that. We must fix it. The American people demand it. And we fight every day. I've been trying to push the president to use his executive authority to close that border. And he refuses to do it. We passed H.R. 2, our signature legislation to secure the border. Border Act that would fix every one of these problems. It's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk 
for over a year. We, we have continued to work every single day. We've passed resolutions. But again, remember what we said at the outset. We only control one chamber, and I barely have control of that. I can't, the Senate won't advance our legislation and the president won't sign it. He won't fulfill his obligation. So why is the border not in this package? Because Greta, we didn't have the votes to do it. I have a handful of my Republicans at least who will not advance a rule to bring that to the floor to combine it with the Ukraine and Israel funding. They won't do it. And so if I All don't right, have me, Republican votes, that means we have to have Democrat votes. Yeah. All right, let me turn now to Israel. And it's going to be about $26 billion in aid, some of it's humanitarian aid, in order to keep some of the Democrats on board to vote for this, to, uh, to provide humanitarian aid in Gaza. Um, tell me this, is that well, if we give this humanitarian aid to Gaza, in light of the fact you've got Hania, who is the head of Hamas, who's living in Qatar as a billionaire, and he's never, he has, as I always say, he didn't invent the, the iPhone, he didn't do uh, Amazon, but he's a billionaire, he's been scraping money off all the funds that have been going into Gaza. What, what uh, can you guarantee the American people that money that goes to Gaza will actually go to humanitarian aid? Who's monitoring it? Yes, well, we are, and our agencies, and, and the Congress itself. We have oversight responsibility over that. We've required, in the House's version of this, a strict accountability that the White House has to give reports of the funding, and we banned any of that funding from going to UNRWA, to you know, any of the UN agencies that are involved with any of the terrorist organizations. These are really, really important things. It, this is the precious treasure of the American people. Israel is a critical ally of ours, and I think most people understand the necessity of this funding. They're fighting for their very existence. They're the only stable democracy in the Middle East. I mean, of course, there's for those of us who are believers, it's a biblical admonition to stand with Israel. We will, and, and they will prevail as long as they're, they're with them. And this is an important, very important symbolic gesture and a very important replenishment of their stockpiles, for example, of the Iron Dome. The reason they shot down all those drones and missiles uh, in the last attack by Iran is because we assisted with that. I think the American people understand the importance of that. But to your point, we have to have accountability over it, and that's what our legislation is going to provide. All right. The, well, this legislation gets bundled. You've got Ukraine, Indo-Pacific, you've got uh, Israel. I mean, it makes it very sort of difficult. There's so much horse trading involved in on these very important issues. Do you like the idea of bundling um, all these important issues together? Would you like standalones? No, I, I love standalones. We're going to have standalone votes in the House. The single subject uh, rule is being respected, and so everybody gets to vote up or down on individual pieces, Ukraine and Israel and Indo-Pacific and the other bill. But here's the thing, Greta, if we don't merge them back together when they go to the Senate, Chuck, we will play right into the Democrats' hands. I'm convinced that Chuck Schumer would fund Ukraine immediately and leave the rest of the items on the table. Why do I believe that? Because that's what they've done so far. The last time I passed, I tried to pass an Israel funding bill out of the House, clean Israel, just the funding amount that they wanted. President Biden issued a veto threat. He said he would not do it because they, the only way they can get that politically over the line and sign it into law is that if it's accompanied with Ukraine. That's the Democrats' priorities. You see it out on bare display. So if we're going to take care of both of these things, you have to merge them together. And that fourth bill that has all of our innovations and all the conservative policy in it, they would definitely leave that one on the table. So merging them together to go to the Senate is to assist us to make sure the House jams the Senate with policy and not the other way around. Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, thank you, sir. Thank you. Good to talk with you.